joining us now. Welcome to Ubisoft Toronto's Industry Night. I'm Marissa Roberto. Normally, this time of year, we get together in person at Ubisoft Toronto to celebrate just being a gamer and the best time of the year to be a gamer, in fact. But the tradition will continue now, just online and socially distanced. We can still mingle, and I encourage you to do so in the chat. We're in there with you, so don't be shy. Put your name in there. We want to meet you. We've made it to the last panel of the evening, titled Bringing Millions of Characters to Life. Joined now by Grant Harvey, Cinematics Director, Natalia Hines, Voice Director, Pascal Ling Dao, Performance Capture Actor and Voice of Bagley, who is the in-game AI. You're going to be hearing him a lot. I can promise you that. Welcome, all of you. Hey. Hi. Hi. <laughs> hello, hello. Okay, so first I have to ask all of you. I need all of your takes on this. When you first heard you're going to be part of a game where you play as anyone, what was the first thought? What went through your head? Pascal, you had to play a lot of characters. <laughs> yeah. uh, the, the, my, first, uh, my first inkling of it was about uh, four years ago when we did a, a, a play test, well, a, yes, a cinematics test, um, where I actually took on the role of, of an early version of Malik at the time uh, and did a, a cinematic sequence with, with, I think, three different characters. And I would do the same action. And once that was set, we had to fit in the other. I can remember thinking at the time, yeah, yeah, we'll see how far this goes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, because, you know, scooch forward three and a half years and the, the degree to which that was turned into a thing was phenomenal. It's such a huge, a huge endeavor. And um, yeah, if I'd known then what I now know now, I think I would have been... I don't know, putting the crampons on, getting the backpack <laughs> ready, basically understanding I was going to climb a mountain over four years. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect way yeah. to describe it. I, uh, this is my first uh, job in video games. I'm a, I've been a film and television director for 30 years, and um, I got the call from uh, Cameron Labine, the, the the writer on on the game, and uh, he said that there there was an opening, and so I came in, and so ignorance was bliss for me. I I, I just thought the idea was <laughs> unbelievably cool, and the and the concepts they had and the themes they were playing with were just so cool. I had no idea that I was stepping into something that was so incredibly challenging. Um, but yeah, I, it was great, it, and uh, and and it's been pulled off, and it's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, for me, uh, I'm a Londoner, so hearing that this game first is going to be set in London and knowing there's going to be a range of voices and masses of diversity, I was really excited. Um, and then, you know, you get into the game and you start and you go, oh my goodness, there is actually a lot of voices. There's a lot to work with. There's a lot of accents, dialect, dialects, uh, languages, styles, tonalities. I just, it became big and bigger and bigger and it just like snowballed. Um, but no, it was a really enjoyable project to be part of. I mean, it's always exciting when you get to be part of a project where it's like, you don't know where it's going to go. It's never been done before. Can we do it? Uh, I mean, I'm hearing that you did. I'm hearing great things already about this game, which is always nice to hear, especially before we dive in as gamers to play. <laughs> but I want to go back to Grant here for a second, because this is your first video game. What <laughs> what a daunting task to be <laughs> met with. Like, you don't even know what you don't know. Yeah, that's the, well, I think that's what saved me, is that I didn't know what I didn't know. Um, because I just, I just took it on like I would any other project, which would be to sort of, you know, ground myself with the characters, learn the story, learn the themes, uh, and figure out how to translate all of that. And and that that's what I do for a living. So uh, it, it was, I think it was actually, and it was at a time when the tech was just kind of emerging. So I think I came in at just the right time to sort of not worry about the tech, because I think everyone was getting, you know, was sort of getting caught up in that and, and, and kind of work with like saying, okay, well, we've got this awesome story to tell. And, mm -hmm. uh, and let's, you know, let's, let's tell it. And, mm -hmm. and they figured out the hard part, let's just go and, and make and tell this story and make something super entertaining, which, which, which we have. I love that you say they figured out the hard part. Okay, like, thanks for saying that. But we all know that like they give you the words, they give you all these ideas. Now you have to bring it to life, literally bring it to life because yeah. we as gamers are interacting with what you show us, right? So how do you plan for something like this in a game never really been done before? Yeah, I mean, the, what, the hard part for me, the tricky part for me was because the hero is literally anyone in London, um, Normally, I would dig into the the emotions and and the feelings that that hero was feeling. But what I realized is that that would be impossible. So, but the story of resistance and the story of of rebellion and the story of taking back what what is rightfully yours 
that's universal. And that's, so that's what I keyed in on. And then to develop um, a language and, and something to sort of hang the visuals and the tones on, I leaned into the villains and the storylines. And so each, each storyline or each villain would have its own cinematic language um, that felt like that area or that chapter or that storyline and that's mm -hmm. how i could get my head around it because you're right like it, it is sort of daunting like i'm yeah. I, i'm sure that you know uh, that you guys felt the same way you need you're something joking, to sort yeah. of grab onto yeah. you know yeah yeah I, 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 the uh sorry go ahead yeah. i want to i want to call you bagley now but okay go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, bagley does interrupt a lot just so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah i i, I may have to say something the, the same thing four different ways just to and, and, until you get what i'm trying to say um <laughs> uh yeah i i think for, for the actors we were again posed with another problem which is well if you can be anybody in london that's everybody and nobody so how do you do that you know um what we ended up doing was basically having a, uh, a sort of a, a solid cast of four actors, um, really solid mocap actors with a lot of experience between between them. Uh, Simon Lee Phillips, Michaela Cannon, uh, Karen Knox, uh, Darcy Gerhardt. These are, are regulars in the mocap volume. And uh, we created um, basically four different archetypes. We worked out their um the way that they gestured the way that they stood the way they walked the way they moved um and we we, we notated that to make sure that it was consistent mm -hmm. um and at the same time we were aware that, that we still had to find the hero in the everyday as well so it couldn't just be um you know an, uh, an older gentleman it had to be an older gentleman who had the hero in him mm -hmm. uh -huh. um so so when the players play them, you don't suddenly feel like, oh, you know, um, well, we're just going shopping, you know, no, we're going shopping for some some hardware, some guns, something interesting, you know, so with intent, yes, yeah, with intent, exactly. Um, so so once once the uh, animation team had all that, they could actually pull aspects of our physicality apart and reassemble them in different um, uh, different combinations to create entirely different uh, characters, in effect. Mm. And, th and, and then we threw it to Natalia. And then we threw it to Natalia, because <laughs> all, that needs, all that needs a voice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I basically then collected these voices, and these, these, um, these people of London, and, you know, it had gone from four to, like, several, several. Um, and so it was, it was more about working with the actors that came in to embody these characters and to voice these characters. They would come in from the certain regions or the certain, or have the certain accents and inflections already. That, and it was all about pairing them up and then working with them and working with this, the awesome script that the narrative team had already written. And, you know, and bear in mind that London, as we know, has many languages, many um, dialects, many, many ways of communication. And all of that had already been written and it was about uh, developing that or adding in the, the slang that was current from from yesterday you know in a certain borough but taking out another one from another borough that wasn't relevant anymore and it was about building upon that and and growing and blossoming and also giving the actors a chance to embody these characters at, without restriction and i think that was that was what's so fun and so authentic about these characters in London because you know you walk past them in the game and what you hear or who you interact with you hear that and you see that in London and that's great fun that was an sure, interesting like you're you're just walking through London hearing them and then you go into the studio you hear them in the booth again you're just like surrounded by <laughs> your people surrounded by people <laughs> constantly I love that I mean we as gamers like to play make-believe right like when we're jumping in into any game we like to stay invested in order to do that to stay invested we have to really have some dialogue that we can hold on to a character that we're invested in in front of us so Natalia obviously you had the task of making that and bringing that to life and helping us stay connected so what were some of the criteria that you look for when finding an authentic voice for these characters that we will be hearing from um, I, I mean, it was it was a huge task and we had an awesome team working on it. So that was you already had that support and that that foundation to build upon anyway. So it was more about finding, you know, if you've got an older character, how would they react or interact with a younger character on the streets of North London in comparison to South London? Also, where where's that older character from? What's their heritage? What's their background? So would they be polite? Would they not? But then you've got the layer of good versus evil. This is a game. There's 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 a 
a goal in this game. There's a resistance. This is, you know, this this isn't London as we know it. This is dystopian. So it was all these layers and kind of figuring out where to start and where to build up on. And I guess the fun was having, you know, playing with this older character from South London and she's in Brixton and her heritage is Jamaican. And for me, as a Jamaican Londoner, that was great. It was great fun. And then seeing, you know, another older um, character from, I don't know, Westminster mm. and then meeting and, you know, having two completely different people from different backgrounds and then a guy from Camden you know mm. and but them being able to form this resistance and to form this coalition and them interacting with each other that language that dialect whilst being respectful in some aspects by again um, <laughs> <laughs> and then you know being able to, to play around with it and yeah I think that was it, it was really lovely to be part of the game the first of its kind that is not only set in London mm. cinematically it's beautifully done um it's so so close to truth you know within the dystopian world of Watchdogs Legion mm. um at, yeah and it and it, it honors London in a way that no other game has both vocally and visually and I think the people who are going to play these games gamers are going to really enjoy this and mm. really be part of that London I think yeah all the all of that sense of scope and detail mm -hmm. and layers like that is what makes something immersive that's what makes something feel like you are part of something and lose yourself in it if the layers and the details aren't there mm -hmm. it feels surface level you don't feel like you're part of it you feel like you're kind of you know you're cruising through it and, yeah. and i think it's incredible like the amount of detail um and just mm -hmm. even not even just from a a design and, a, and an artistic level, but just like from the point of character, like you say. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what's cool is like the cinematics, like any of those characters that you mentioned will play in the cinematic, the cinematic will be the same, but that character will be there. And it's not like they're saying the same dialogue. They're actually saying different lines, like depending on who the character is. It's, it's mind blowingly cool. With players anyone, you have this incredible narrative opportunity that I don't think has been offered yet. Mm -hmm. which is you put the player in the situation where they are in the shoes of somebody that's very different from them, mm -hmm. and yet they are the hero. Yeah. So you yeah. can be in the shoes of somebody who's 60 years your senior, and you are the hero. You can be in the shoes of somebody who's a teenager from a different part of London, and you are the hero. And the team that you build ends up being a team of people that you build through necessity that come from all different backgrounds and demographics and experiences in life and ages and the whole lot. And, and from a narrative point of view, you're, you're going to a very old idea, which is the only way that you can really become a true hero is if you have an experience which is out of your ordinary experience. Mm -hmm. You know, King Arthur started off as, you know, a farmer in effect, you know, Candice Everdeen. I mean, they, they, this is it's a, a regular uh, sort of narrative trope. But here that's been brought into a game where the gamer mm -hmm. gets to do that. And I, yeah. I, I, I thought that was extraordinary. Oh, yeah. Uh, I do want to keep it on London here for just mm -hmm. a moment longer, because we did talk about in the last panel how London itself truly is a huge character in this game. And we spoke yeah. about the eight boroughs just briefly now. But um, how are you able to then unlock? Do you feel like you unlock a new feeling when you tap into each of those boroughs? Like, will a gamer viscerally experience that? For sure. Yeah, for sure. And I feel like, again, to my to sort of my thought about detail, like it's it's interesting, the more detailed and the more specific you get about the characters and the, the location and all of that, weirdly, the more universal it becomes. Like for mm. as a story, like we all know, like when you watch something that's generic, it you don't engage. And like yeah. the more specific it is, and they were like the team worked so hard to research that properly. I mean, we have a Londoner on the on the call here. She, <laughs> she confirm, but uh, but they worked so hard to make it specific and authentic that 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 will make it universal to someone playing in Brazil or playing mm. in you know in China or wherever. It will make it that specificity will make it universal. It's interesting. It, it, uh, that's what I found when I was when I you know when I was exploring the game for sure. I uh, want to talk about Britishisms here, then, just for a moment. I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> You'll have to tap up for this one. But yeah. uh, would there be anything that you can call to? Do you remember any of them right now that might be on the tip of your tongue? You're just like, okay, this was definitely this is the Britishism that we might learn. Oh gosh, that's a good question. Um, I, I would say there's thousands. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, I can't. I 
there, there was times that, uh, doing there was time doing Bagley when I would be uh, howling with laughter because the writing team had nailed a <laughs> London expression just perfectly. Um, <laughs> yeah, even to the point where they could even say, well, actually, that's the kind of expression that would be made by somebody who was who's my age so because we because we have different slang from different age groups right we have different references it's even to that level of understanding um and yeah i so, sometimes they, they surprised me i was like oh man i haven't i haven't i haven't heard that one for a while but man that's good <laughs> um oh gosh i can't think of any of the the top of my head but um i know there's certain scenarios that are very british there you know you can go into the pubs in this game i'm not oh. going to say any more than that i'm not going to spoil any more than that i know i okay. can say that um but you you can go into pubs and i guess pubs are very british so it will be really fun for the gamers to be able to see what happens see their interactions when they're talking to different people and um yeah i guess that was and one you, that stuck at the we can go into a pub and like stand next to someone and have a pint without yeah. a mask that's not, that's not enough without a mask there. there we go <laughs> i know we're just stuck in this I, 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 I see a drinking game coming on <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about bagley here for a second because uh, i heard that we're going to have a little love hate thing going on with him so can you confirm pascal <laughs> how would you describe bagley uh yeah well um i would <laughs> Well, Bagley has to be many things at once, right? He has to be a, a help meet to the player without being a servant. Uh, he has to be uh, persistent in reminding them to do something or telling them to do something uh, without being annoying. Uh, he has to be entertaining, but he's not human. So how how on earth do you do that? Um, I was lucky because I ended up, I was doing the temp voice before I did the uh, final voice. So I, for about a year, I was recording early forms of Bagley uh, as references, basically. And what, what the writing, to, again, this is, comes down to the writing again. What they did was is they made him uh, irascible, uh, sarcastic, uh, intelligently coarse, um, borderline offensive, for sure. <laughs> uh, and it's basically a typical Londoner, um, which... <laughs> <laughs> which I, which obviously I have a reference to because I'm from London. When I when I left London in, uh, I describe myself as a Londoner more than I describe myself as British, weirdly. Um, but uh, when I left in 2011, a friend of mine gave me a book called Shit London, which was just a bunch of images of, you know, uh, bad shop fronts, bad, bad graffiti. <laughs> um, characterful London. Yeah, characterful. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, you know, images of various parts of the human body, which seems to crop up everywhere in London. And uh, I ended up handling this made this made the rounds around the team because it was and, and Bagley's a bit like that. But that means that he can um, he can still be funny, darkly funny in the most awful moments. And that sort of lends him a certain charm. But you also kind of hate him because he doesn't really care about squishy human beings. Mm -hmm. he, he he wants to help them, you know, set the world to rights, but one more or less, whatever. You know? yeah, <laughs> honestly, that's again, where the writing, like you say, the writing is just yeah. uh, like, it's just tone perfectly because a character like that, that you hear a lot of. Um, I heard a lot of my yeah, own voice. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but he's, that, uh, to take the risk uh, that they did of making him as entertaining as he is, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a challenge and, and, and bravo uh, Pascal for the performance as well, because it's yeah. a big part of his voice is what you brought to it. But, but yeah, it, they didn't take, they didn't go safe, which they could have, and they didn't. Uh, and it paid off because Bagley is a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. You hate him at times, but you have to love, <laughs> you love him. him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, segue, because it's a little bit of a tease, so I do want to get a taste of how Bagley interacts with characters in games. Let's go to some of that now. Now, Naomi, we've already lost one operative, so try not to get killed, or we'll be in the red for the day. Copy that. Ah, cannabis and fentanyl, together at last through the miracle of genetics. Okay. Here we are. There he is. All the three of us. <laughs> having a nice chat. Well, I say three because I'm non-corporeal. I feel sorry for you people who are just sitting there in, in lighting. So are we back? Oh, okay. so <laughs> I missed you. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's brilliant. Mm. Um, okay, so what were your initial thoughts of Begley when you first read for him versus now? Like now that you've lived in this yeah. character, like how did you bring your own flavor to him? Uh, well, as I said, I did the temp first, which gave me a lot of time uh, to basically play around with... Um, 
different levels of uh, suckiness, different levels of um, non-humanness and so on. And we, there were different trials, that different variations of Bagley that we tried in that period. But then at the same time, I was also doing the mocap as well and seeing what it was like from the player's side as well. So I benefited from knowing the pretty much the full storyline uh, from Bagley, but also uh, taking that storyline and experiencing them as the uh, characters as well. So I knew that um, that what I that what I was doing had to that the strength of my character, if you like, had to be consistent because it had to work with anybody that I was talking mm. with. Can you talk us and tell you through the process of how you take a page of this brilliant writing done by Cameron Le Cameron Levine and just the entire writing crew and how you bring it to life like this? Um, because you're not just taking the script and being like, hey, thanks, Cameron, like, just fuck off, we're good. Like, you obviously have to, do you have to go back with notes or is everything he's giving you is perfect already and then you just work with the voice actors? How does that work? I mean, honestly, the script was on point. It was a joy to be given something that was so London. I mean, the research that had gone into uh, the, the language and the tones of these characters was so good already. So having this script as um, a foundation and more to even work with it w was brilliant. There was It was having these actors come in from the different boroughs, different regions, different backgrounds, as it were. And as we know, London's so multicultural, so there were a lot of different multicultural backgrounds. Then working with the script, it was more about adding slang or um, colloquialisms or just little things of, with how they would interact. Like in certain cultures, if you're an older person interacting with a younger person, there's a certain way you would say you would talk to them or mm. a younger person interacting with an older person, you know, there's a certain respect. So it was all about adding those little spices to it that then sort of created and then added to this layer of this, this cake, I guess, that we already had um, with the awesome writing and with the actors that came in anyway being top tier. So yeah, it was it was a joy of um, going into sessions and like having a script and then like sometimes going off just because you're having a conversation and this the, the, the actors are in that character, so in that character and mm. so method as a director it was then allowing them to explore that and expand on that so that we could bring it back and then add to the script were, which, they, uh, like, were they the narrative director uh, uh natai and cam the lead writer were they were they encouraging you to to sort of do that absolutely like, so natai and cam, awesome. i worked very closely with both natai and cam and they yeah. were like sometimes even in the room and we were having conversations and it was all the the, the freedom that the, the creative and narrative team mm. writing team gave was also awesome because I've worked on games before where you know you, you kind of have to stick to script and that serves that game's mm. purpose. Yeah. But for this game, the fact that it was so free, the fact that the writers were like, do you know what? We've got this. This is mm. we've got this script. It's already juicy. Let's have fun. Let's play. Mm. Let's see where we can push these voices. Let's see how they could interact. Good versus evil, happy versus sad. All these different layers, all these different emotions yeah. of every single character. I mean, it's a huge job. But having that that freedom and that leniency and being with the writers in the room. Room and the actor I mean it was it was we had some real real fun times <laughs> I, I, I felt the same way like on the mocap stage uh I was encouraged to bring my experience to blocking the scenes so that they had life and they they weren't just what the writer had conceived in their brain they they encouraged me to sort of work with the cast and find the scenes find the heart of the scenes and change and they were there and they would make changes in the scripts and I wasn't mm -hmm. expecting that uh, in the world of animation. I thought it would be a lot more sort of tight, um, but they 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 really did encourage us to sort yeah. of find. And I think players will feel that they'll feel the authenticity mm -hmm. of that. It won't feel forced. Yeah. So wait, are you saying you prefer to work on video games now? It's uh, <laughs> it's pretty awesome. I'm doing another one right now, and uh, yeah, okay, it's pretty fun. Pretty so we got you for a while. Then do you dream in video games now? Uh, <laughs> I. They are very detail oriented and very uh, <laughs> the OCD part of my brain. So yes, I definitely have dreams. <laughs> I, I, when I moved into my house, I installed some fans, you know, because it obviously gets very hot in Toronto. And uh, I was, I realized, I looked up one day, and I realized the fan looked exactly like a marker that you would have on your uh, <laughs> yeah. your mocap yeah. suit. I mean, exactly yeah. the same. I was like, this is. i obviously, I can't get away from it. <laughs> you can never escape. Well, I mean, listen, for, for gamers on the outside looking in, voice acting and performance capture just seems kind of like a magical dream that all of us kind of wish we could experience. So I kind of want you now to crush my dreams here a little bit and just explain the biggest challenges that you face while performing your jobs. It's really hard. 
Okay. <laughs> I think it's um, very difficult. Yeah, I think for me, I mean, the learning curve was very steep. And for me, I think um, something I'm very proud of that I brought to the table was sort of busting out of, uh, there is a mentality of, of kind of preconceiving it, pre-visualizing it, doing exactly what you had thought about and draw pictures of. And so for me, I, at first, it was difficult to sort of free everyone from that and see what the universe brought to the table, um, because that's how I work. And I feel like that... Uh, it was a it was a worthwhile challenge because I think that that brought something to the table and and I, I know that the animation directors and that all of them they really enjoyed the the benefits of the authenticity that that kind of like the the lightning in a bottle that isn't necessarily always there when you're planning everything out detailed to, and you work with really cool people who want to do really cool things that are really enthusiastic like I'm not kidding it's 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 so refreshing it feels like. It feels like the start of my career when my friends and I were making music videos out of the back of a pickup truck, you know, with some, with our friends. <laughs> okay, sorry, I wanted you to discourage me from wanting to live this oh, life, shoot, but okay, sorry. sure. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Well, Can't the hours it. are long on my end. I mean, for me, the hours, um, yeah, they can be quite long. I think a lot of people have the idea where if, if you're a voice actor, you come into the studio and the director sits there and tells you what to do and how to say a word and then you're done. Um, that's not the case at all. I work slightly differently. Firstly, I'm very physical, so we will do a physical warm up every time. Um, and it's all about embodying the character. So, yes, you have to keep your feet still when you record. But I'm up throwing metaphorical things, obviously not throwing at the actors, but, you know, throwing my <laughs> arm to say, you know, this is a this is whatever it is coming towards you. So how will you react? We're doing a lot of body movements. We're working with your body, how you project, how you um, hold still, how you, you know, different things, different exercises. So actually, it's quite a grueling. It can be quite a grueling task. And we're doing this over, as we said, like three, four years for just one game. And I'll be working on two, three games at the same time. So it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. But it's, it's also... Um, fun I think there's obviously a very safe way of doing things and you'll never push the actor to the point where they break obviously you have to be very safe within your voice within your body um, and looking after yourself but at the same time it is rewarding you know you're going to see that you're going to see Watchdog Legions and you will be if you're a voice actor and if you're any part of any part of the team you're going to feel so proud that it mm. took us three years of love and, and blood, sweat, and tears. But look, look at what we've created. Um, I know we're meant to be putting you off here, right? Yeah. But for me, it's, it's <laughs> absolutely a joy. It's a joy, otherwise <laughs> I wouldn't be doing it. But it is very hard, and it's it's something I've worked f several several years on. Okay, all right. Badly, <laughs> badly. Was that good? Uh, That's terrible. Was Sorry. Good. It was good. Uh, okay. I mean, for, uh, for me, uh, uh, performance capture is a mixture between theatre and film and something more as well. Uh, it's like uh, theatre with your body and uh, film with your mind simultaneously. But uh, I always had this dream of being able to completely transform myself to the point that even people who knew me would mm. not be able to recognise me. Now, of course, without enormous amounts of prosthetics, you can't <laughs> really do that, you know, in, in, in everyday life. But with motion capture, it's just my bones. It's just my uh, my movement. And and that is, I mean, again, that's an impossible thing uh, made possible. It's extraordinary to be able to, because sometimes I can I can point to myself on the screen and go, that's me, and nobody will believe me, because they'll say, oh no, that's that's so and so. No, it isn't. That's that's me. I'm just behaving that way. <laughs> I changed myself physically entirely in order to be that person. And well, we and to me, that's a, a real joy. A we have to mention that you also play other little characters in this game right you're you're not yeah. just in our ear we we see you walking around is that correct oh yes I, i'm i'm one of the uh i i play one of the archetypes uh i was okay. the i was the uh, old man a lot of the time um <laughs> we of the of, of all of us we all did um take turns um uh, sometimes playing different archetypes but they, they were all very well established as to the rules that they had to follow behaviorally mm. um but you know um M Michaela's old woman is is such a product of her as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it's unmistakable. Uh, and it, so we each brought we each brought our aspects yeah. of our own versions of the archetype to the table. Um, I can't wait to see the start seeing the YouTube videos of like all the you know the different <laughs> oh, yeah. cinematics and uh, yeah. with the different uh, you know with the different team members that that players come up with. It's going to oh, be yeah. so it's cool. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. We, we 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 were doing things that were technically so difficult. 
uh, I, I won't go into them now, because even to explain them would, yeah. <laughs> would make my brain explode. Tonight. Uh, but so technically difficult, and yet I've seen the results of I've seen the results of all the different archetypes in the same cinematic simultaneously, mm. and they're all moving slightly differently at different timings and different, and it's extraordinary because it you you play it back and it's seamless. It's yeah. it's yeah. It, yeah, it's mind blowing. And what's cool is that. Well, yeah, like just thinking about that, like watching YouTube videos of people playing the game, like everyone's going to be writing their own narrative in a lot yeah. of ways, uh, which is super cool. Like it's like the heart, you know, the big the big picture will be the same, but uh, there won't ever be two cinematics that look the same on YouTube. Like it just blows my mind. Oh, yeah. I was just talking to our last panelist about how, listen, people are going to be writing lore for some yeah. of these characters that they're meeting. Yeah. Like there's going to be full on backstories that you yeah. don't even think about. And then you just see them later that fans will be writing online. Like I'm yeah. so excited to see how rich and deep the history mm -hmm. and lore of all these characters will eventually be. So it's just like the unknown of this game and what it can bring us. Just so exciting just for me as a gamer. But listen, you guys have done it now. You fully executed this ambitious title. Uh, so the world is going to get their hands on this game. How are you feeling now that it's in your rear view? Excited. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> Excited. <laughs> Stoke. It's cool because, I, like I said, I was fil in film and television. I'm pretty old, and I was in I'm in film was in film and television for thirty. Oh, years. Hey, wait, no, no, no. I know. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, and listen, uh, my <laughs> I have a couple of a uh, couple of sons that are huge gamers, and I would be. I worked on some pretty cool TV and film shows, and I got to tell you, I was like, I'm working on a Watch Dogs game. Now I finally have some credibility in my house. Like <laughs> they're so excited. So yeah, I uh, I'm in, going to enjoy that as well. Actually, being a cool dad. So yeah. Yeah. That's it. The cool I, dad. I'm I'm yeah. just looking forward to seeing. I don't know. There's, it's been four years, and I I worked in in on so many different aspects of this game, and met different departments, and saw just the sheer talent and doggedness required. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and creativity and technical know-how the whole gamut it's extraordinary that that is a, a game is an extraordinary thing to even think about doing mm -hmm. and then you add the complexity of this one and i'm so looking forward to seeing this go out into the world because it's like a it's like a big gift that we've always been working on we just, yeah. we just want to go here. Ta -da! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited for the world to see London. I mean, I still feel so proud that I was, you know, part of the team and that I, I was able to be a voice director on this. I mean, and then it's, it's like, you know, you've, you've nurtured your child for three months and then you're going, OK, world. Here you go. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm I'm really excited to see um, everybody's like, see and hear people's feedbacks mm -hmm. um, to to see what and hear what the gaming community think and feel about it and how they're able to be part of London, especially now that you know we're not necessarily allowed out. There's curfews, there's lockdowns that you know, and and being able to in, to completely immerse yourself in this world of Watch Dogs Legion and and still be able to explore, still be able to go places, still be able to yeah. discover new things and new people and new languages and new just everything in general that I'm really looking forward to people being able to tap into. I mean, hey, and, listen, yeah, I'm excited and, too. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, sorry, more words from Bagley. Yeah, and 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 Bagley will be hosting a <laughs> weekly virtual pub quiz. Uh, <laughs> Is that true? Oh, I Are wish. In, uh, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> like, hold up, really? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. M maybe future this like lore that somebody will make for you will end up being your next gig. <laughs> said it, it will happen. <laughs> no kidding, right? Listen, thank you all so much for your time and just bringing us into your worlds. It's just so valuable for us as gamers to get to tap into that. So congratulations on the game. This is huge. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Of course, it is time now to experience the magic of play as anyone before we play Watch Dogs Legions for ourselves tomorrow. So here is game director Kent Hudson.